Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing PhotoScore and Notate Me Ultimate. This is a software package for either Windows or Mac that lets you scan, photograph or import images of sheet music so that you can play it back, transpose it, edit it, separate out different parts for different performers, make a quick backing track, or export it into almost any music software like Sibelius, MuseScore, Cubase, Reaper, and so on for further editing and arrangement. You can even scan handwritten music. You can also write music notation out with a stylus or your finger if you have a touchscreen laptop, or no doubt you could use something like a Wacom tablet. Now, the very first video I uploaded to this channel was a tutorial on how to use PhotoScore Lite. This is the sheet music scanning software that comes with Sibelius notation software and in that video I demonstrated how to quickly scan a simple score, tidy it up and then export it to Sibelius. Although it's now six years old that video is still very popular. I also have a detailed article about music scanning software and apps on my website which is one of the most viewed posts I have ever written. I've been thinking for a while it was time Time to come back and have a look at the ultimate version of PhotoScore and Notate Me to see what extras you get and whether it's worth the upgrade. A quick disclosure, Neurotron have sent me a review copy of this software free of charge, but as usual everything here is my own opinion of the product. And by the way, I'm aiming this video more at non-Sibelius users. Why? Because if you already subscribe to Sibelius, then you already have access to PhotoScore Lite and we'll have a good idea what it does and whether you might like the extra bells and whistles you get with the Ultimate Edition. But Sibelius people, stick around if you do want to learn more about those features. Now, I know there are plenty of musicians out there who don't want to pay the ongoing subscription to Sibelius month after month and are using alternatives. The good news is you can buy PhotoScore Ultimate for a one-off payment and then use it very successfully with other notation software. And in this video, I'm going to focus on one of the cheapest options, which is MuseScore. You can also export MIDI files, which can then be imported into any door. So let's head over to my screen and take a look. By the way, if you enjoy the video, do give it a like. And if you want to get more of my home recording studio tutorials and reviews, make sure you subscribe so you get to see when I've uploaded new content. My original video was a very quick tutorial on how to scan a simple piece of sheet music into PhotoScore Lite. What I'm looking at here is the Ultimate Edition, and so it has many more features. And I'm just going to quickly run through a few of the differences between the Basic and the Ultimate. You can read much shorter note values down to 128th note as opposed to 16th. You can read up to seven different accidental types rather than three, eight different clef types. You can have four voices on a staff and up to 64 staves per page. So you could scan in an entire orchestral score. You could scan up to 400 pages of that score. And if we continue, it's got a handwritten music recognition engine. You can also capture capture much more data from the score itself, including slurs and ties. You can read hairpins, text, articulation marks, triplets and tuplets, grace notes, cross staff notes, guitar chord diagrams, four string guitar tab, percussion staves, different kinds of bar lines, different ornaments and pedal markings. And you can also transpose within PhotoScore itself instantly. So you can do quite a lot more with this Ultimate Edition and we're going to have a look at some of the features now. When you first open up PhotoScore, it looks like this. So you've got a blank screen here. There are some built-in examples here, which we can go through in a minute. You can choose from the bar at the top to scan pages. Now I've already set up my scanner. So if I click this button here, which I'll do in a minute, you'll see that it will instantly start scanning whatever I've put into my flatbed scanner. You can also choose to open PDFs that contain scores. You can start to create a new Notate Me score, which I'll come back to in a bit, or you can open images. Let's start by scanning the sheet music that I've put in my scanner and see what it looks like. 
Once this scan has completed, as it has now, I could go on scanning extra pages, but I'm going to just choose to finish to have a look at one page. And then this is where it is reading the score itself. What I've got now is I have got an image of the scanned score here. And then what I've got down here is the reading of that image. And this is where I can make quick edits within Photoscore if I want, before I either print it out or extract parts or export it to other software. To do any corrections, the easiest way to do it is to actually view the keypad. I'm not going to spend ages and ages editing this, but there are a few bits and pieces that we could deal with just to show you that you can. So it's made a fair job of interpreting all the score markings, including staccatos, including slurs. You can see it's missed a staccato off here, so I could quickly put that on there. If we move along a bit, there are actually some tenuto marks there, so I could put that in there and there. OK, so you can see you can very quickly add little bits in. But as I say, it's made a pretty good job of it. It hasn't really interpreted the time signature very well because the time signature is 66 for each dotted minimum. So what I will do is I will edit this. The other thing I can see it's missed off here is it's missed off the first and second time bar. So what you can do here is if you click on this bar and right click and go line, repeat ending, then here I can put alternative repeat ending one. So I'll put first time here. I think it looks pretty good. This last slur, I think it's split it into two because on the scan there's just a slight gap there. just spotting little things as I go through. Now the other thing is it hasn't put an instrument on these stays because they're not written into the score. You can click on a point in the score and you can start playing from that point. It didn't interpret the repeats if I go to the settings here and go to advanced, it ignores repeats and multi rests. So I think we'll tell it not to do that. Now let's try that again. As you can see, it actually can recognise first time and second time and it can play through at the speed that you tell it. Now, let's say that you wanted to play at a much slower speed. You could certainly do that. You could adjust the tempo here. So this is quite useful if you wanted to quickly create a backing track to play along with. Now, unfortunately, because this is for the violin, the violin sound in these MIDI instruments is pretty dire. And also, it could be that you don't actually want to hear the violin when you are playing this back. You just want to hear the piano part. You can do that, again, by going to the advanced settings. You see, I can untick this box to always play the whole system. So if I just want to play the piano part now, all I need to do is hold down the shift key, click and drag over the stave like so. So just select the piano. And then if I just press the space bar, it will start playing just the piano part. So that is a very neat way of making a quick backing track to play along with yourself, just simply by scanning the whole score in. You can view the score in performance mode. So all you see on the screen is the actual score itself. And then you can start playing back. There is another feature here called Rescore. And what you can do is you could very quickly, if you had one score with multiple parts on it, as I've got here, if you simply wanted to just create one part for each performer, 
then you could uncheck some of the staves. You can then choose what sort of size a printout you want. So if I want to go for A4 and I can choose portrait or landscape and I can choose to rescore from that scan that I made earlier. And as you can see, what I've done there is I've actually made one violin part, which I could then print out to give to my violinist. Now, this is a scan of some piano music, which you could choose to just play back straight. But obviously, that doesn't sound quite right. So there are ways you can adjust the expression of the playback and also you can add some swing. So this really does demand to be swung while it's played back. So if we go for standard swing and try it again. So there are quite a few options to the playing back of scores. Another really useful feature in PhotoScore is the ability to instantly transpose either a complete score or one line in a score. All I need to do is click the transpose button and rather than the whole score, let's just do the violin and let's transpose it up a major fifth. You can choose different kinds of intervals. So you can go up by octaves or by intervals. But let's go the major fifth. So at the moment, we've got a line that's in G major. If I go OK, you'll see that it has instantly transposed all the notes up and it has also transformed the key signature to correspond with that as well, which is really, really useful. This would be particularly useful if you, say, had a score for a B-flat clarinet and you wanted to make it for an E-flat instrument, for example, you could instantly transpose and create a part that would be useful for a different instrument. Or if you had a whole score that you wanted to change into a different key. So if I just undo what I just did and then transpose the entire score down a perfect fifth, you can see that it has now transformed the whole thing down into C major. Then, of course, once I had transposed it, I'd be able to play it back in that new key. Or I would be able to rescore, say, the violin again, so that I could again make that part for the violinist in the new key. Now, PhotoScore comes with some demonstration files which demonstrate some of the other features of the software quite nicely. So if we look at a bluish grass here, double click on it, then you can see that this actually has tab notation in it. So if I now click here to read this image, we can read tab notation. And you can also read percussion notation. Another feature that's very interesting is you can also scan in handwritten scores. You'll see that this has been handwritten. And if I choose to read that. For anyone who likes to write out their notation old school, but then would like to share that with other people, you can actually scan that in and it will interpret that. Now, obviously, there's some timing errors here. So if I just view the timing navigation and have a look here, it has interpreted this flat here as a note, I would say. So if I just delete that, OK, that's deleted that one. And then if I go here, it thinks this flat here is a note as well. So if I just delete that, you get the idea that you can actually scan in with all the markings as well, handwritten scores. Now, so far, the scores that I've been looking at are quite straightforward. So let's do something a little bit more complicated. I am going to have a look at Ich habe bin Elend, a multi-stave choral piece with lyrics. So let's read that in. It's managed to read in most of the lyrics and all the score markings and so on. And I could go through and edit them. I noticed this first lyric should be ich, not with an exclamation mark. So let's say that's a lyric. It's interpreted the expression markings, the lyrics, the notes, the different voices within the choir. So it's actually done a very good job of interpreting this. Hairpins, slurs. What I'm going to have a go at now is exporting this to 
some notation software. I'm going to save the music XML. Remember that you could obviously open this in any notation software, but I'm choosing MuseScore. And as you can see, I have managed to take that image of the score, read it in PhotoScore, and then actually export it out here. It's exported all the different parts, the lyrics, the score markings like slurs, the expression marks. It's actually done a very fast job of that for me. So if I wanted to use this as the basis for further arrangement and so on within MuseScore or whatever software I chose, then I could do that very well. I started off by scanning in a very simple score. And the thing that was nice about this sheet music was it was in a nice flat book that I could easily fit into my scanner. However, the problem that I have always had with scanning sheet music is that many kinds of music books don't fit very well in your flatbed scanner and you can end up with very poor results. I'm going to show you an example here. This is a page out of the St Matthew Passion. So it is a multi-stave score and it's actually a very thick book and I struggle to fit it into the scanner. So if I now choose to read this and you have a look at what it did with it. Okay, so it's made a pretty fair job of it at the beginning, but then because the book is folded over and it's a thick book, it just can't read the beginning of the line. As you can see, the scan itself is very dark there and you can't read the key signatures or the clefts. It really is a bit of a mess. But what you can do with PhotoScore is you can use your phone or any camera you have to hand. And this is so much easier than scanning. So I think this is something you'll probably do more often because it's just much more convenient and obviously more portable as well. And you can open any kind of compatible file. So you can read in bitmaps, TIFFs, PDFs, which is very useful if you want to go and grab scores from public domain sites like Imslip, but also you can read JPEGs. And so while I've got it on that, what I'm going to do is read in this image that I took of the same book with my mobile phone. It's opened up the file and it's automatically read it as well. And as you can see, it's done a really, really good job of interpreting that score. It's read two kinds of lyrics. They're in German and they're in English. And it's read the notes. It's reading slurs. It's reading several voices per line because as you can see, there are two different voices going on on this stave and that's why they're different colours. One thing it has got wrong is the time signature. It's not actually in 3-2. It's had a guess at that, but it's actually in 12-8. That will make a difference. And you can see here, I've got a bit of a timing error. In fact, what I could do is view my bad timing navigator and go straight to where there's timing errors. I could then go through and correct some of these lyrics as before and so on. But really, this has made such a good job of quite a complex score with lots of lyrics in it as well, just from a photograph. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to save this one as Music XML and I will open this up in Muse Score as well. You can see that it's read the time signature, the key signature, the lyrics. It's got all the different kinds of notation and things. It's read these as two different voices, which is very good. The thing that does happen in MuseScore, I've noticed, is you can end up with these hidden rests being added in. And what you can do is you can click on them and go Control Delete, and it will get rid of those. So they appear greyed out like that. So Control Delete. OK, there's some more here. If I click on that and go Control Delete, you can see that it removes those little timing things that go wrong. So it doesn't take long to go through and just get rid of those. Obviously there's some character errors because this was in German and in English. I've given it quite a hard job to do, but it's done a pretty fair job of interpreting that score really quickly just from a photograph. Now, so far I have been focusing on notation, but you could also, if you wanted to, export this as a MIDI file for importing into a DAW. So if I choose Save As and choose to save it as a MIDI file, if I save it here and then open up my DAW, for example, Reaper, I can insert a media file and I could take that MIDI file 
and open it up and you'll see that each of those lines has been interpreted as a MIDI track. So if I open up the MIDI editor here, you can see that I've actually got all the MIDI data for editing graphically or playing back on whatever instruments I choose. So that is yet another option. You can quickly convert your sheet music to MIDI and of course you've got plenty of options to edit it here first of all within photo school and then further within your door another way of using this software is to use notate me which is built into the software now remember i'm using the desktop version of this software i have got a laptop with a touch screen it's an hp pavilion you could also do this on a surface pro any of those laptops that have the touch screen would be ideal for this. This is not to be confused with the Notate Me app, which you can buy from either the Play Store or the App Store, depending on whether you're on Android or iOS. You can import files from them into this desktop version. I'm going to go New Notate Me School. And let's start with the violin part. I'm going to start entering some notes. You'll see that there are different ways you can edit. I'm going to use my stylus to enter some notes. I'll speed this sequence up. So if we look at what I've got there, I've got the first two bars of Minuet 3. I will now create a formatted score for full playback printing and exporting. Now I've only scratched the surface of what you can do with PhotoScore and Notate Me and every time I've opened it up I've discovered another feature. It comes with extensive documentation so obviously to really make the most of this software you will need to spend some time working with the manual. So who is this for? Well it's perfect if you still love handwriting sheet music but then want to share it or manipulate further and convert it into a publishable format. It's brilliant if you have libraries of sheet music you want to arrange, transpose or manipulate. Excellent if you want to make use of all the public domain scores on Imslip and not just print them out but use them as a basis for arrangement. And it's an excellent engine for converting sheet music to MIDI so you can edit it further in your door, especially if you have really complex scores. So choir leaders, composers, arrangers, this gives you a range of ways you can get your ideas or base material into a format for further editing or quickly scanning and creating parts for different performers. It's good for creating backing tracks. You can learn to use it quite quickly. Mostly it's very intuitive, but it's definitely one of those programs that the more you use it, the more you think, oh, wow, it does this as well. It's probably an expensive option if you just want to do quick transpositions or backing tracks and so on, as there are lots of cheaper apps that will do that. But on the whole, it's a very clever software package that is well worth the money if you know you are going to really use all those features. It's excellent that you get this for a one-off payment, not a subscription. If you want to give it a try, then you can download a demo version from the Neurotron site and see if it's for you. As usual, if you have any comments or questions do post them below. I do love to read them all and if there is anything I've missed or you want to know more about let me know. If you've enjoyed this video then please give it a like that really helps me out and do subscribe to the channel if you want to get more of my home recording studio tutorials and reviews. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Bye for now.